Hey guys, uh, this is Teacher Nick uh, coming to you uh, with a new video uh, on the exam that most of you are going to be writing on uh, in a couple of days on Wednesday all around the world. So uh, I thought I'd jump on and kind of uh, do a quick video on uh, paper two, question 1A. So hold on to your horses and... Uh, Let's get going. So, the very first thing we need to do when it comes to the question is understand the question. Okay, there's so much in that that we, so much information is provided to us by Cambridge, and we need to make sure that we are using as much of it as possible. So, I've said to you guys in previous videos, and I'm sure if you watch Teacher Ash's IGCSE videos um, or any everybody else. One of the first things they'll tell you is to look at your tap, your text type, okay? Your text type, your audience, and your purpose, your tap. Okay, so let's just read the question. The head teacher has asked you to produce a leaflet called Leaving Home. The leaflet will be aimed at older teenagers who are going to live in another town or city to go to university. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so 1A says, write the text for a leaflet. There's our text type. Write no more than 400 words. This is important. Okay, in your writing, give advice and guidance on how to manage living away from your family for the first time. Now, guys, what you really need to note here is the fact that there is 15 marks available. In the previous paper, okay, it was 10 marks. Now it is worth a whopping 15 marks. You've only got 60 minutes for this question. So again, as always, your timing is going to be crucial. Okay, so you need to get as much as you can out of the question. So it tells you that you have to create a leaflet. It tells you you need to title the leaflet called leaving home your audience your main audience okay is older teenagers people like yourselves right okay so uh, uh is there another audience well think about the fact that your head teacher has actually asked you to produce it so in essence the head teacher is going to be the one to approve it. So you need to be thinking about the language that you use, the vocabulary. Okay. Uh, right. No more than 400 words, guys. I suggest aim for about 350. So if you go a little bit over, you're going to hit that 400 words. But you've got to keep in mind your tick, 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 tock time. Okay. You are giving advice and guidance. Okay about what it's like to live away from your family for the first time. So that is your purpose. You're going to be advisory. You're going to give guidance. So what is Cambridge asking for? I mean, think for yourself. I'm a young person. I'm about to finish my studies soon. If I was going to another town or a city to go to university, what sorts of things would I need to think about? I've got to find 400 words. Ah! Okay, so think is the key here. So you need a plan. Remember that what you write in 1A, you're going to be discussing in 1B. So know your key conventions, know your key conventions, know your key, 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 key conventions. I haven't said it enough yet, have I? Key conventions. Okay. So this is what is going to make your text unique. You're going to make decisions based on your text type. Now, in this case, it's a leaflet. Okay. So think about the, the shape of your text. Think about how you're going to organize that information. 
what is going to be the overall structural of, the, of your text. Then you still got to think about language, grammar, syntax, okay, sentence structures, okay, variety of sentences and paragraphs, the choice of tense, the register. You've got so much to think about. Plus, you've got to create all this information. There's nothing there to help you except for the question. And what structural devices are you going to be using in this text? Okay, so let's go have a look at what a pamphlet or a leaflet might look like. Okay, so here's a, a, a pamphlet uh, for a, it looks like a, a holiday destination. Uh, the place is called St. Lucia. So you can see they've got a, a, a very nice picture. Well, they've got a picture of somebody kind of getting sucked into the sand. Um, it doesn't look rather promising that, I have to admit. But, okay, it's the language that we're more concerned with. Because in the exams, you don't get to draw pictures. In fact, you don't even get to put your text into columns. So we want to focus on some of those structural and language devices. Now, if this is an advert in the form of a leaflet, it's going to use persuasive language. Okay. So they'll have things like a title, St. Lucia. It's a well-known holiday place, I assume. You're going to have that large font. Now, you can't go and write a large font. That would be just crazy. Okay. So they'll normally tell you what your title would be. But if they don't, always come up with a good title. Okay. So <clears throat> I want you to think about how the information in this image in front of you is structured. How have they put the, the, the information on the, this, this leaflet of theirs to say, oh, come to St. Lucia? Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other things that they do. They give us an introduction to the experience. Okay, all year round entertainment. It never rains. It's always lovely and warm and I guess. And then right at the bottom here, they've got this, the salty sea breeze and the fresh feeling. So they, they've used a bit of alliteration, which is nice to see them using language devices. This is a real pamphlet. Okay, so it's not one that I, I made up. This is real, real, real. I don't know if you get realer than real. Anyway, St. Lucia, okay, is well known for its, well known for its biodiversity. So again, using phrases like well known, words like biodiversity, excellent. Okay, we like those lo low frequency words. Okay, have dinner while watching the paddling crocodiles. I'm not so sure that sounds very exciting, but I don't know who the restaurant is for. Maybe it's for the crocodiles and maybe it's for the humans and maybe the humans first eat and then are fed to the crocodiles. I don't know. I haven't been to St. Lucia. Okay, but they've used subtitles. They've used bullet points. They've used positive phrases and along with much more. There with that um, exclamation mark. You'll notice there's not a hundred exclamation marks. That's the one. It's effective. Okay. Oh, I lied. There's two. There's another one. Okay. Bad, bad me. Okay. Again, subtitles. Why would we have subtitles so that the person looking at the pamphlet would know how they want their information. Okay, what to look for if they're looking at it. Uh, persuasive language, try their famous carved pineapple ice creams. I don't know, I've never heard of them before until I saw this, so maybe it is famous. Um, beware of the vervet monkeys. They may be cute, but they will definitely try and steal your food. I get all worried about this. The crocodiles are stealing, well, are eating you, maybe. The monkeys are eating your food. I'm not fancying your chances here in the restaurants. Okay. Um, 
Don't forget your costume. Look at that lovely imperative and that listing costume, suntan lotion and towel to thoroughly enjoy. Oh, there's another exclamation mark. Three. But look how the information is structured to give the reader an overall feeling. Okay. So the first thing they do, they keep the, the information they, they, small. So you've got to read the front. Okay, great. They kind of give you what it's well known about. They tell you that they've got restaurants. Then they tell you about all of the different activities. Now they've got you hooked. And then they tell you about the accommodation. And I'm too scared to read about the accommodation because I'm worried that maybe you're sleeping with the fishes. Okay. So, um, so, and then uh, they give that last bit of advice. So just think about how the, the, this is, is, is structured. Now think about the pamphlet you have to create for this exam. Okay, think about how you're going to place your information. What information do you think uh, older teenagers might want first? Now, this is a persuasive pamphlet and you've got to be ready for anything. Your pamphlet is there to give advice. Okay, things to think about when you go to university for the first time. So... These are the things I need you to remember. Who asked you to produce the head, the, the, the leaflet? Okay, because that could be important, especially when it comes to your reflective commentary, which we're going to cover in a second video to this. Who is your main audience? So it's older teenagers, probably in their final year at school. Okay, what was the title of your leaflet? Leaving home. Do not forget the title. So many times students forget the title and it does count against you. What is the purpose of your leaflet? Advice and guidance. What is your tone as the writer? What is your attitude? You're going to be caring, motivational, supportive. Okay. Remember why you are writing this leaflet. How to manage Okay, being away from home for the first time. First time. Okay, so this that's important because otherwise you're going to go off task. And think about why the teacher wants you to create a leaflet. Why does this head teacher want you to create this leaflet? I mean, the head teacher just, you know, get lazy and no. Okay. You are a young person, okay, same age. So you will know what language to use, okay? Like, I'm so woke, man, or like schnizzle my nizzle. I don't know. I'm, I'm old. I don't, I, in my time, it was like, yo, groovy man. Okay, anyways, so... Because of the language you're going to use, the head teacher wants you to write for, to them. Okay? Because you will write in an approachable way. Your tone, your mood, your language, your vocabulary is all going to be exactly what the students need. So let's go and have a look at a, a student example. Oh, how you are assessed. We come into two student examples now how you are assessed okay so things we saw in our, our, our uh, uh, persuasive leaflet for santa lucia i don't know maybe it's french maybe that's why that okay anyways okay title and subheadings we saw that clear paragraphs okay good uh, relevant information and this is always the tricky part whether it's going to be for this question one, the section A, question 1A, or in, in, in section B, where you're having to do a longer piece of writing. Okay, the relevant information. This is what I was telling you to think about why is the head teacher asking you to write this? What sorts of things do I have to think about? 
Finance. Finance. Money. Okay. We, 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 when you're a student, you never have enough money. Okay. Personal safety. So, yeah, you're in a new place. You don't know where everything is. Okay. You find yourself taking a turn down a dark alley. And the next minute, you're on your way to Hogwarts. That's not what you wanted. Well, okay, maybe some of us would, but not everybody. Personal safety. Making friends. Okay. Making friends can, can be difficult sometimes for us. So some advice maybe on how to make friends. Keeping in touch with family. Some of us, again, making friends, keep in touch with family. It all depends. But you're not writing this about you. You're writing this for all the teenagers, so you want to give them some good advice. Keep in touch with your family. It's important. You get homesick. Time management. I don't know. Somebody else really, really smart, very good looking, uh, also spoke about time manager earlier in this video. But that's time management in your day at uni, getting to university, getting to classes on time, catching the buses. Buses, that could be something. Travel, transport. Okay, eating healthily. Yeah, students eating healthily. I don't think so. I think we lived on two minute noodles um, for like the, the, you know, 20 of the 30 days of the month because we spent all of our money in the first week. Okay, so yeah, maybe, maybe get a healthy apple in there every now and again if you can. Okay, second person voice, very important, okay, you should, okay, so remember you want to make sure you're balancing that tone, a range of structures for giving advice, so being advisory, okay, and they actually tell us you don't have to draw any pictures, columns, or any visuals, even though they're key conventions, you don't have to do it. What are you being marked on? Now, this is important, guys. This is the stuff that the examiner actually looks at when they decide what is my mark that I'm going to give the student. Okay. A wide range of language. Look at that. A wide range of language. Read. Okay. Read stuff. Okay. Complex structures. Not just paragraph structures and sentence structures. Okay. But think about all of the other structural devices that we've spoken about in the other videos. Okay. Less common Lexus. Again, I've said this a thousand times. Okay. When you're writing, there's only like 25 words you have to study. If you're going to Mr. Everything English, he's got a wonderful video on the, and then even on the IGCSE success. Okay. Just good vocabulary. You don't have to use every single word. Okay, like it looks like a swallowed a dictionary. That would be wrong. You just want to use some good uh, three or four words in your whole text. You'll be fine. Accuracy. Check your spelling while you're writing. Is it logically and effectively organized? Remember I showed you how they, in that original, okay, uh, there was a certain structure. Ideas are placed down so that they move Clear, you know, smoothly. Okay. Task is fully achieved. Keep checking the question. Content is fully relevant. Don't go off task. Audience is fully engaged. Use descriptive language, figurative language. Make sure that your audience is absorbed in this wonderful, beautiful leaf that you're going to be writing. Okay, let's have a look at that student example. Student example A. So I want you just to pause here, okay, and read what the student did. Okay, <coughs> so you've paused. <coughs> I just counted to five. Um, so, Things the student did right. Remember, we saw the things that we need to find. So the student's got the title. That's fantastic. Um, so that very first paragraph, okay, 
is giving the student that, that overview of what the leaflet is about. That's good. Uh, we've got some subtitles. Um, we've got some colloquial language. Mom. Um, okay. Uh, they've combined uh, some ideas here. So uh, manage on your own. So they've included discipline and diligence. Diligencia. And uh, uh, time management. Okay, good. We like that. Uh, and safety. Okay. Um, even though working hard is important, so is balance. Work hard, play hard. I can't agree any way. Perfect. Uh, the next one, look at that. That repetition of money, money, money. And that, that's, uh, isn't there an Abba song like that? Money, money, money. He's so Anyways. Okay. So there's some good things here. There's also a couple of things. Mm, but it could be a little bit more engaging. Could be a little bit easier to read, maybe, but I like I liked a couple of things in the text. So I yeah, I'm happy. Okay, they used puns like money doesn't grow on trees, off trees. I don't know. Um, maybe it grows off trees everywhere else. Maybe that's the point. Okay. Nothing wrong with being a little bit uh, humorous. Short sentences. Okay. Let's look at the next one. I want you guys to read the next one. <clears throat> okay. This is student sample B. Okay. So take a second to read through it. Pause now. And we've paused and you've uh, been through the text. Okay. So again, Student didn't forget the title. That is very good. Okay. Uh, fitting into your new city. Okay. Could have had a full stop there. But again, uh, interesting start. Nice use of bullet points. Okay. Uh, it's got this introductory sentence. Good use of uh, punctuation here. I'm liking this. Uh, we've got some listing. Okay. Uh, some good advice. Okay, so the, I, this is pretty good. Again, uh, another, uh, and these are just parts, guys. You know, I, I, I'll, um, I'll see if I can put the whole text into the, uh, uh, into the bottom of the video, and you can read through the whole thing. But I just want you to look at some of the things that the student has done here. Okay, so your parents, as a young student, again, connecting with that audience. Okay. Um, use of words like dorm, those colloquial words that kind of will resonate with students. I mean, young people, young people. Um, I, I think this is always quite funny. Uh, even if it's awkward or rude to leave an uncomfortable situation, rather be safe than sorry. That's such good advice. It's such good advice. Anywhere you travel in the world and that, if you ever feel something is not right, okay, as a traveler myself, I always like to get out of there. Okay, it helps that I'm big and scary. So, last word. Don't go off task. Keep checking your planning. Keep reading that question. Be prepared for any text type. Okay. Go out and read real-world articles, real-world reviews, real-world blogs, advertisements, websites, travel or holiday writing, speeches, podcasts. These are the text types that will come up in the whole of paper too. Good to know your key conventions there. Make quick decisions and be confident about those decisions. Okay, And the way that you become confident, again, Study your key conventions, study your structural devices, study your language devices. Okay. Guys, go out and check AngiLearn on YouTube. Okay, teacher Adna, she's an amazing teacher. She has some amazing videos up on the YouTube. And Cambridge at Home with Lilica. Lilica's got some fantastic videos on everything. Okay, now, not just uh, AS level, but uh, on all the different subjects. She's been a Cambridge student herself. She knows what she's doing. Like and subscribe. That is an imperative. Okay. You will do it. Please. 
okay? Because obviously the more people that like and subscribe, then I know that people are watching the videos and then that way I can make more videos. Okay, ask questions. I've just learned, because I'm still new at this, making videos. How can you tell? <laughs> um, so I, I now have found out how to allow you to ask questions in the, in the actual uh, thing. So please ask questions. Um, I will reply to all questions that are asked that ask, make sense. Okay, don't ask me how old I am, how tall I am. You can ask me about my football team, though. Okay, and, and hopefully, you if you don't recognize the colors, then you'll have to ask. Okay, thank you very much, guys. You rock, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.